Okay, so now we're on to discussing the circle of fifths. And I've got my Madeline Masterclass book open to page 54, where Brad Laird gives us a very simple circle of fifths. This is what we need to know. We need to be able to play uh, around here, we play our exercises starting on C and going around in fifths this way to a backing track. Now, we're going to have just a brief discussion here on the circle of fifths. I've got a blank here, and there will be some of these blanks available for download. We're going to go ahead and fill this out as we discuss the circle of fifths. Uh, circle of fifths, we always begin with a C at the top. The C has no sharps or flats. It's all natural notes. We've uh, discussed all this in previous lessons. And the circle of fifths is based on the fact that you start with a C. You look at the C scale, find the fifth note, the fifth degree of the scale, and that comes next. So that would be a G. Now for mandolin and fiddle players, you've already got half of this basically memorized because your instrument is tuned in fifths. You've got a G, you got a D, you've got an A, and you've got an E. Now, if you've ever tuned a mandolin, you're very familiar with that. So we start with C. We move the next fifth up is a G, the next fifth up is a D, the next fifth up is an A, the next is an E. What comes after the E? Well, the fifth note of a, an E scale is a B. So the B goes here. Fifth note of a B scale is F sharp. But we are going to also put a G flat, which is a harmonic equivalent of F sharp. And from that point on, we're going to go around with flats. Okay? So... You might ask, why do you have flats on one side of the circle of fifths? There's a very good reason for that. We may uh, give a brief explanation of that here in just a moment. <clears throat> but to begin with, it's easy to see how you can, from memory, write this much. You may have to memorize the B and the F sharp or G flat. But you're just going around in fifths and your mandolin is tuned this way. So when you get to G-flat, you're going to continue on in flats. What comes after G-flat? Well, it would have to be a D-flat. And then we've got an A-flat and an E-flat. And a B-flat. And that brings us on around to F. <clears throat> and there we have the circle of fifths. Now, one of the interesting things about the circle of fifths is that as you go around this way, you're looking at fifths. So the five card in a C, um, in the key of C, a five card, is going to be a G. What is the four card? Well, it's going to be an F. So to the left of C, you've got the fourth. And to the right, you've got the fifth. Okay, in the key of D, the five card is an A, the four card is a G. This is extremely valuable information. You can find the uh, four and the five for any key by looking at this circle. The five card in E flat would be B flat and the four card would be A flat and so forth. Now, Let's look at key signatures. If you look at a piece of music, there will be a key signature. Let's see, I've got a piece of music right here. And uh, if you look at this, you'll see the key signature right here. And what we have here is we've got a sharp. Just one sharp. What key would that be? Well...
with the circle of fish, you add sharps as you go around to the right. You add flats as you go around to the left. So one sharp goes on G. Two sharps for D. Three sharps for A. Four for E. And so on as we go around. So you add a sharp for each fifth that you go up. Now, everything on this side takes flats. So for an F scale or an F, a key of F will have one flat. Key of B flat will have two flats. Key of E flat will have three flats. And so on. So when we look at a key signature on a piece of music and we see one sharp that tells us that the key for this music has to either be the key of G or its relative minor. We'll talk more about relative minors in just a moment. Okay, now let's talk about what secrets lie behind this circle and basically you have it right here uh, what we have here is we've got a tablet where I have drawn some lines and written out some scales and uh, I started out by writing out the scale of C C D E F G A B C and I've got the degrees numbered up here from 1 to 8 this is the octave. It's going to be the same as this. So I write out the scale of C. And then I look at the fifth note, which is a G, and I come over here and write the scale of G. Fifth note of G is D. Come over here, write the scale of D. And then we write the scale of A, and so on. Now, when I write the scales out like this, it tells me what is the fifth. It tells me what is the fourth. And it also tells me what is a six. Why is that important? Well, the sixth degree of the scale gives you the relative minor of the scale. So in the key of C, the relative minor is A. That means that the key of A minor has the exact same notes as C. It just starts on A and goes from A to A playing these exact same notes. In the key of G, the relative minor is E. We start on E, and we play through the exact same notes. Therefore, the key of E minor has exactly the same number of sharps as the key of G, F sharp. And so, when we have a key signature with one sharp, it could either be G or it could be E minor. It's customary on the circle of fifths to put the relative minor on the inside of the circle. F sharp minor. C sharp minor and we go around that way the relative minor and the key of B gonna be G sharp minor relative minor in the key of G flat is going to be E flat minor <coughs> Now, these keys, these three, are special because you use harmonic equivalents with them. So we'll get into that in just a moment. Now, why does one side of the circle of fifths have flats? And the answer is really pretty simple. 
when you write out the scales of the circle of fish, you'll soon find out because you'll write these scales. Uh, take the fifth, write the next scale. Take the fifth, write the next scale. Take the fifth, write the next scale, the next scale. And you come down here to the key of F sharp, which is at the bottom here. When you get to the key of F sharp, your fifth is a C sharp. You write out the C sharp scale, and you have every note is sharp. The fifth of C sharp is G sharp, but we don't want to use a G sharp scale. So what did I do? When I got to C sharp, I stopped right here. I just stopped. Instead of writing a C sharp scale, I stopped. Why is that? Because the key of G sharp would have too many sharps. It would have every note would be sharp except for F sharp, which would be double sharp. And we don't want to use double sharps in our key signatures. These are uh, usually considered to be theoretic keys when you get into double sharps and things like that. So when I got to C sharp, I stopped. And I put a yellow background here, and I backed up, and I did the harmonic equivalent of B is C flat. I don't want more than seven flats. In C flat, every note is flat. So we couldn't go further back with flats, or there would be too many flats. There would be double flats. So I backed up here, and I wrote out the C flat scale, took the fifth, which is G flat, fifth of that is D flat, and then we got A flat, E flat, B flat, and a fifth of B flat is F. Fifth of F is C, and we're right back to the beginning of the circle of fifths. And that's why we have flats on this side and no double sharps. As I had mentioned a moment ago, <coughs> uh, the three keys at the bottom of the circle of fifths, you usually have two keys given for each one. We use the harmonic equivalents there. The reason for that is if we start with a C and we go around adding sharps, you see we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. C sharp has seven sharps, so we don't want to go any further with sharps. If we start up here with the flats, we got one flat, two, three, four, five, six, and finally seven, C flat. We don't want to go any further than that or we'll have double flats. <laughs> so we come around the circle of fifths all the way to C flat and from C this way all the way to C sharp. <laughs> and that way we end up with two names for each of these three keys. And these are the keys that are useful in music. Some you'll find more often and some less often. Uh, many of the keys on this side are considered more orchestral keys, where the ones on this side are considered more folk music and popular music keys. But of course, there's a little blending there. But uh, these are the keys that you're going to find in Western music. You, you, you're not going to find a lot of keys you know, that have double sharps, double flats, triple sharps, triple flats. Because the truth is, you could go on building scales around and around. You could add sharp till you've got triple sharps, four sharps. It just doesn't make any sense to do so. But uh, this could go on in infinity. And so here, the circle of fifths, this is where it stops from C around to C sharp, and from C back around this way to C flat. Now, when we're learning the circle of fifths, in order to uh, play music and to practice with backing tracks, uh, I suggest that you learn just the way that I've drawn it here, from C around to F sharp, uh, G flat, and then starting at G flat, going around, flats all the way around to the F and you'll find it easier to remember that way as long as you know that these this key could also be called a C flat and you could write it as a C flat with a whole bunch of flats 
this could be a C sharp instead of a D flat. But there are fewer flats in D flat than there are in C sharp. Sharps and C sharp, are, every note is sharp, and with uh, C flat, every note would be flat. So the B and the D flat are actually easier keys to write in. Now let's talk again about uh, relative minors. As you see in this particular uh, circle of fifths, the relative minors are given on the inside here. And I suggest that when you uh, find a circle of fists to print, you can. Uh, there will be a copy of this one in the downloads. Uh, and whichever one you decide on, it's a good idea for it to have uh, the relative minors on the inside so that you'll have a quick reference to that. Now, I think that this is the longest video to date that I've done for the uh, Mylon Masterclass. I, I know it's going to clock in at over 16 uh, minutes. So I want to close it up here. Uh, I tried to get through that as quickly as I could and pack a lot of information into it. And if you have any questions, be sure and ask them in the uh, study group threads at the forum for this uh, lesson. Uh, it's important to have a circle of fists to refer to. I would suggest that you find one that you like. There will be a couple of downloads here for you. Uh, but uh, find one that you like. You can Google it. Uh, have it printed up and tag it to your wall. Also a good idea to have one in your uh, music uh, folders. And really not a bad idea to have one in your instrument case. Okay, on to the next video.